Good evening, ladies. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to James H. Hilton Coliseum for tonight's game between the Cyclones of Iowa State and the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's game. First of all, for the visiting Hawkeyes, at forward, a six-foot, nine-inch senior from Cedar Rapids, number 44, Al Lorenzo. At forward, a six-foot, six-inch junior from Flint, Michigan, number 23, Roy Marble. At center, a six-foot, six-inch senior from Wichita, Kansas, number 40, Kent Hill. At one guard, a six-foot, two-inch junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 10, B.J. Armstrong. And at the other guard, a six-foot, seven-inch senior from Detroit, Michigan, number 14, Bill Jones. Meet the starting lineup for your Iowa State Cyclones. At forward, a six foot five inch senior from Flint, Michigan, number 44, Jeff Grayer. Michigan, number 44, Jeff Grayer. And the officials for tonight's game, all from the Big Ten Conference, Phil Bova, London Bradley Jr., and Denny Friend. Well, stand by. We'll be back with a packed house and a whale of a basketball game in just a moment. Come home to the freshness. Come home to the quality. Come home to the brand you know. Come home to Highland. Jeep Cherokee's advantages and certain things stand out. Cherokee gives you a choice of two or four doors, two shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive systems, and an optional four-liter six-cylinder engine that's more powerful, far more powerful than anything in its class. But perhaps Cherokee's single biggest advantage is the simple fact that it's a Jeep. There's only been one Republican candidate for president willing to take the lead in support of the Soviet-American summit and the INF Treaty. That's George Bush, and here's why. Well, it's a major reduction of nuclear weapons. The first time in the nuclear age that we're eliminating an entire generation of nuclear weapons. And the agreement is verifiable. Over the years, I've gotten to know Iowans pretty well, and I am convinced that the people of Iowa... ...is a copyrighted presentation of the Cyclone Television Network. Any use or rebroadcast of this material without the express written consent of the Cyclone Television Network is prohibited. And believe you me, these two teams are about as even as you can get. There's the field goal percentages, both shooting better than 
three-point range. The advantage goes to the Cyclones. Free throw line goes to the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes also are leading in the rebounding, but the odds makers has, have listed this game as an even Stephen matchup, and this is the 40th meeting. Last year, Iowa won 89-64 in Iowa City, and of course, here in Hilton Coliseum, Iowa State has prevailed in five of eight meetings with Iowa since the series resumed in 1971. The officials keeping the reporters back on both end lines and the cameraman. Bill Bova will toss it up and it'll be Al Lorenzen against LaFesta Rose. And the game of the year is underway. Greer. And Hill brings it down for Iowa. Iowa State starting out in a man-to-man. -man. Cyclones in strong man Ben will try and put pressure on the basketball, try to keep the Hawkeyes from getting it inside down low to their big people. Marble against Greer. And it's turned over. Fast break time. And rejected by Hill. Saved by Bill Jones into B.J. Armstrong. And one hustle by the Hawkeyes. Hill charging. Well, a lot of action here in the last two plays. You look at Kent Hill, early 6 6'6 player. Jeff Grayer down the other end comes in, has to go away from the basket to get the shot. Kent Hill coming from out of nowhere makes a great block. And now we'll find out whether or not the Iowa press bothers Iowa State. Slows him up. Robinson from 15 has it blocked out of his hands, and he'll retrieve it. And Iowa playing his zone, Gary. Right. Well, they had success last year. Uh, the grayer inside against that zone. They held him to 17 points. Woods faked the shot. And it was deflected, and it'll be retained by Iowa State as Lorenzen. Last to touch it. No scores yet. Good look at Al Lorenzen. Really bounced back this year. Had an off year last year. Come back, has really been playing good basketball. Leads the rebound. Hopkins having a little difficulty getting it inbounds. Wanted to go to Robinson. And Rhodes finds it. And Iowa State's on the board. Well, that's the Fester Rhodes shot. He likes the baseline shot. I think it's one of the most difficult shots. It's a touch shot, but he does it very, very well. Iowa State almost trapped B.J. Armstrong in midcourt. And now the Cyclones fall back in what appears to be a sagging man-to-man. -man. Here's Hill around Robinson. Blocked out of bounds. Iowa State got a break that time because he had the inside position. Well, Fester Rhodes didn't come soon enough to help. You see Elmer Robinson fronting here. Rhodes should now, he should have been over to that spot and cut it off. Elmer Robinson comes from behind, makes a good saving block. Hill in the paint. Goaltending on Rhodes and give two to Kent Hill. Probably a little over anxious right here. Hyped up for this ball game. No doubt about the call. Blocking on Hill against Greer. And that's two on the big man from Iowa. And Ed Horton is going to be checking into the Iowa lineup immediately. Well, you do not lose anything, really, when you come with uh, Ed Horton, a starter last year. Comes off the bench, both physical players. Horton a little bigger at 6'8". There he is, Ed Horton, averaging 8.1 points a ball game, five rebounds a contest, and Jeff Greer goes to the line, hitting 69% from the free throw strike for the year. And Greer, who is averaging 27.6 per game, has his first in the book. Super article in Sports Illustrated this week is a feature on Jeff Greer, well-deserved. Misses the second. Tompkins saves it out to Rhodes. 15-foot jumper. Hawkeye, Hawkeye's not blocking off the boards. Cost him two points off the free throw line, rather. Armstrong bringing it up quickly, and a foul call on Woods from behind. And Armstrong will have two coming. And boy, this man has been red hot at the free throw line. 13 of 13 for Armstrong. Well, good penetration. That's one thing Armstrong likes to do. Woods getting from behind, as you mentioned, uh, perfect from that free throw stripe. Said the foul was on the floor, not a shooting foul. 
potential. Iowa will inbound. First Iowa State foul of the game. Armstrong from three. Far rebound down to Horton against Greer. Blocked partially. And a foul inside on Eleanor Robinson. Elmer Robinson not agreeing with the call. Let's take a look under Harris. Iowa gets the offensive. Had that hand on him. Had his left hand on Bill Jones and pushed off. Marble. Marvelous move. Marble showing his athletic ability there on the fadeaway. Good jumping ability. Won't fall for Rhodes. Horton down with the rebound. The Hawkeyes on the run. Quickly, Marble. Nice feet in the paint. Bobble Jones picks it up. Good interior passing. Iowa does an excellent job of that always with their interior passing. Six to five. Iowa leading. 17-30 to play first half. Number seven for the Hawkeyes. Number 20 for the Iowa State Cyclones in this week's AP poll. And in the 3-2 zone, Iowa got Marble on the point. Woods wide of the mark. And Jones tips the rebound into the hands of Armstrong. Iowa now with four rebounds compared to the Cyclones one. Marble in traffic. Jones off the glass. Lorenzen rebounds, follows, and hits it. Al Lorenzen with his first two of the night. Iowa just banging those boards, going strong. Beautiful pass by Thompson. Nice touch by Greer and a nice assist from Tompkins. Jones working against everyone and still bangs it home. And that hurts. Uh, when you come back, when you score on one end and the other team comes back, it hits you quick like that. It takes something away. It takes the crowd out of the ball game. Good job by Iowa getting it down the floor quick. Jeff Moe checks in for the Iowa Hawkeyes along with Kent Hill now. And coming out, Bill Jones and B.J. Armstrong getting rest. Jeff Moe, Moe excuse me, I was going to say a streaky type shooter. Whoever's covering him, if I was Iowa State, I'd get up on him tough, not let him get an unmolested shot. Make him shoot the first one under as much pressure as you can. So he seems to, when he gets the shot going early and down, he is tough for the whole ball game. As he lines up against Robinson, he was holding on to Robinson's shirt. And the referee had to break it up. Iowa by three, 10-7, 16-19 to play first half. Tompkins from three-point range. Nope. And Iowa's doing a great job sealing out inside. Well, their strength is on the backboard, and they're working both ends. Getting the ball down extremely quick on offense. Getting some good shots. Horton makes it a 12-7 ball game. Greer foul by Marble. First Iowa. foul on Marble. Third team foul. Iowa comes at you all the time. They're always trapping in there and, and putting good pressure and aggressive. That time, Marble gets caught. Well, we played about four minutes. And thus far, the Iowa Hawkeyes lead Iowa State by five. Napa's having a busted out sale, so come in now for the bargains and let Napa get you ready for the big chill with sizzling sale prices on lots of winterizing parts and accessories for your car or truck, including Napa's power battery, booster cables, thermostats, engine heaters, spark plug wire sets, plus cooling system products and windshield scrapers and de-icers. Great buys on quality Napa parts to help you beat the big chill. Better hurry, though, before the sale ends. Available only at your participating Napa Auto Care Centers and Napa Auto Parts stores. The only way to travel is Cadillac style. Some people want more, not just a little bit. This is your life, and you're the only one who's living it. Let's go, let's live, let's love every mile. The only way to travel is Cadillac style. Cadillac. Don't be misled by catchy phrases and gimmicks. The simple truth is that the 5TV Forecast Center operates the most powerful weather radar of any television station in central Iowa. That, combined with a sophisticated Triton X weather computer and 5TV's team of weather watchers, 
makes Five TV's Forecast Center the best equipped and operated television weather station in central Iowa. Help Five TV make this Christmas a special one for some very deserving kids. Get involved in the Toys for Tots program by dropping off a new toy at our studios in Des Moines and Ames. Just a reminder that near the end of the game, Gary Thompson and I will select the Cyclone player of the game. And your Napa Auto Parts stores in Iowa and the Cyclone Television Network will donate $100 to a scholarship fund that at the end of the year will be awarded to a Cyclone athlete who wishes to pursue a postgraduate education. There's the rebounding story, and that may well be the story on the scoreboard also this far. That's right, Iowa very strong in the rebounding. They own a rebound margin of 7.3 on the season. Rare tries it. And doesn't hit it. Down come up, comes Iowa. Low from three. Jones blocked on the second effort. Third one misses. Horton in the paint. And it gets the roll. Iowa State is just not going to be able to let Iowa get in like that. There's three black shirts inside of white shirts. White shirts are all behind. Bill Jones being cautioned by the referees on touching the ball after it goes through the hoop. That stops a fast break. Here's, and the, here's the pressure. 1-3-1. One, one. Good over the top pass. They got the advantage. Rhodes misses it. And the rebound to Jones. Mistake by Rhodes. Inexperienced. Should have got the ball to the middle man. They had three on one. Horton inside against Greer. It won't fall. The rebound tipped out by Tompkins. Picked up by Woods. Here's a three on one to Tompkins. Excellent job by Terry Woods that play. Time going to one way, taking the defensive man away, and then dishing back to the side. And traveling on Ken Hill. 14-9, Iowa by five. But a costly turnover for the Hawkeyes, and Iowa State will have the basketball back. Turnovers, two zip. Iowa does an excellent job. They trap you or play you tough no matter where you take the ball. Under the basket, a quarter court, three quarter, half court, they're always making you work to get the ball in bounds. Iowa content to sit back in the zone. Here's Robinson from only two. Well, Robinson has really been shooting well as of late. The last three games, he's got 19 points. Big hit by Rhodes. LaFesta Rhodes with a big steal and basket. And Rhodes with six points in the ball game, and Iowa State is back to within one. Well, that's turnovers caused by Iowa State. We'll have to keep them in it to match up against Iowa's strong rebound. Horton being ridden by Robinson. He gets the foul, and Horton gets the basket. Interestingly, Gary, I don't know how many times Tom Davis has employed this lineup, but he's got both Horton and Hill in there at the same time. Well, they're really banging the boards. You see him get the advantage. Robinson overcommitted that time and then pushes him against as he goes through. Horton gets it down for two and goes to the free throw line for a three-point opportunity. Iowa right now, in my opinion, getting much too much penetration. I think Iowa State would like to keep him, would like to keep him out on the fringe, make him shoot the outside shot. Horton makes it a three-point play. Mike Bourne in the Cyclone lineup now for Terry Woods. And Bill Jones back in for Kent Hill. Tompkins against pressure. Gets it to Greer. Here's a three on two. Rhodes stops and fires. Beautiful job there by Rhodes of getting himself under control. Iowa State doing an excellent job of beating the press. They're going over the front end of that press. And then they got a numbers game on the backside. Rhodes with eight points leads all scores. Horton going against Robinson. And Horton now with nine. And he leads all scores. Oh, bad pass by Bourne. Nice pick off by Armstrong. Up, no good. Jones with a foul. Marble and a foul inside. It's going to be on Robinson, which I think is his third foul. It's one of those just reaching type fouls. See, Iowa again inside all the time. And there's Robinson. Just should have turned him loose. His value as the team is to stay in the ball game. And that's three. Well, I've got three early ones on. They've got two on the board. That's the third foul on Where Robinson. Put it no doubt three. about it. And Paul Dorfell comes back into the ball game, and Dorfell just returning from a major injury. Well, I talked to him yesterday. I watched him work out Iowa State, and he said he's not jumping as well or doesn't have the maneuverability. The trade-off here, not as strong offensively as Robinson, probably will get a little bit 
better defense on the inside. Marble misses the second rebound. Door foul and had it tipped away. Topkin saves it. And Iowa State on the attack. Iowa by five again. And Rhodes tries to cut it down. Doesn't. Greer picks it off and sets it up. Good judgment by Jeff Greer. They're showing some experience. Looked at the shot but was off balance. Took the ball back outside and set it up. Bourne needs some help. Gets it from Tompkins. Tompkins bounces it through there. Gets it into Rhodes. And it's stripped out of his hands. And a foul call on Jones. That was a good block by Lorenzo that time from the backside. Al Lorenzo to 6'9". Bill Jones, the backup guard and forward. Only averaged a little over three points a game last year. Come back, leads the Hawkeyes in scoring so far this season, 13.7. And Rhodes, a 72% free throw shooter, misses the first. Good look at Tom Davis, the National Coach of the Year last year. And now into the lineup for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Mark Jewell, sophomore from Lafayette, Indiana. And he'll be sparing Al Lorenzo. Rhodes with nine points in the ball game, and Iowa with a four-point lead. Armstrong does a nice job of getting that ball and moving it down the court fast. Really puts pressure on the defense. In this basketball game, you certainly cannot rest after you score. Armstrong has it knocked out of his hands, and a foul call. The foul is on Gary Tompkins, and Johnny Orr does not agree. Well, there's a lot of strong physical action underneath this board. There again is the penetration that causes problems. You see Dorfell coming over. Good defensive help. Gets all ball. And then Tompkins over the top. They call him for the grab. So Iowa with possession and a new 45. And the team fouls 5-4. to four. Iowa State with the lead. Marble with a key rebound. Up and in. And a great, great job by Roy Marble. Hawkeye is just tremendous on that offensive board. They're just living off those putbacks right now, just inside Iowa State every time. Another factor in the ball game, Gary. Jeff Greer, averaging 27 points a ball game, has only one basket so far. Mike Bourne from three-point range. Mike Bourne could be a very important basketball player in this game for for Iowa State because of his ability to hit that outside shot. He's more effective than Terry Woods. Jewel. Basket good, offensive foul on Jewel. See Mark Jewel going on a solo. Again, team defensive help is not there. Does not slide over to pick up. He gets it all away. Late coming. Dorfell, fortunately for Iowa State, goes in and picks up the foul. Pressure again. Tompkins gets it into Bourne. That's where they do not want the basketball, is right in that corner. Good out. Two on one. Over to Greer. Fifth point of the ball game for Jeff Greer. And Iowa's lead is three with 12 minutes to play in the first half. Horton fouled and gets the basket. Both clubs getting up and down the court quick. The defenses just cannot get set. Here they come down on this end. Horton goes up. Greer tries to come over and wards off. Gets called for the push underneath. Horton eyes the ball through the basket. He had his season high last year against Iowa State, 17 points. Jeff Bowe checks back into the lineup for Bill Jones for Iowa. That last foul whistled against Paul Dorfeld, his first of the ball game, and team fouls are even at five. And Horton is off to a banner night. Perfect at the line, a dozen points, and with 11 minutes, 53 seconds to play in the first half, Iowa leads the Iowa State Cyclones 27 to 21. I brought my son in last night. The doctor's not sure what's wrong with him. He's been up all night waiting. They say he's doing better, but the last few hours have been a nightmare. Thank God we've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I've got enough to think about right now. And I know they'll be there when I need them. I just hope my son can pull through. Mr. Clark, 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans in Iowa. We'll be there for you. You know, I'm not easily annoyed, but I never liked the way the vegetables always fell off between the sirloin on my beef kebabs. I fix that. I don't put vegetables on my beef kebabs. In fact, I believe that's why someone invented salad. Beef, real food for real people. The 5 TV Toro First Snow Contest is officially over. On December 14th, the National Weather Service in Des Moines recorded over one inch of snowfall. Watch 5 TV News at 5 and 10 for the Toro Snowblower winners. Here's an old Milwaukee, old Milwaukee-like quick stat, and you see it there, Iowa leading 14 to 4. That's mainly responsible for this 27 to 21 lead by the Iowa Hawkeyes. And don't forget, join us each and every week for the Johnny Orr Show along most of these same Cyclone Television Network stations. No one likes to talk about Iowa State basketball more than Johnny Orr, and he'll have plenty to say, I guarantee you. So check your local listings for time and channel in your area. 11.53 to play in the first half, Iowa by six. Tompkins up court to Greer, and again a three on one. Greer stops and fires and misses, rebounds his own miss and puts it in. And that's seven in the ball game for Greer. Greer on the miss, but a good job when he rebounded. He did not take the ball down. He caught it and just took it right up the top. Blocked by Greer on Marble. Rebound down to Hill, and he lays it back up and in. And the offensive rebound story is killing Iowa State. It's a war under the boards, and as you said it, Iowa Hawkeyes is winning the war. Ed Horton's career best was 17 against Iowa State last year, and he already has 12 so far tonight. Born from three-point range, misses, and he's one of two from that distance. Low now will try to retaliate. In traffic, dumps it to Marble, and Marble doesn't hit it. Rebound to Dorfeld, and here comes the track meet. Watch it, LaFesta Rose from behind, and bodies fly. Jeff Moe hits the... Hardwood, very hard. Well, you see, Rhodes had a man, Tompkins open, did not see him, was looking too much at the ball. He saw him look late, and then Moe, they call him Mr. Hustle, coming up from behind, might have saved two. Nobody plays any harder than Jeff Moe. What a competitor. Iowa falling back into their zone. Good ball moving here, move the ball. Good step in by Bourne right there. Three-pointer by LaFester Rhodes. And he's hot. Cannot leave LaFester Rhodes alone out there. He has proven time and time again that he can score. He's not a fluke. Rhodes enters the game averaging 22 a night. And great move inside by Jeff Moe. Again, no backside help on the defense. When he had it, he had clear setting to the bucket. That's the first basket of the ball game by Moe. And Iowa State answers on the other end. Gr Grayer just on a solo right there, taking it all the way himself, getting the short jumper. Michael Reeves to Hill, baseline, bodies fly, and contact made, and Hill still hits it. Six for Hill. Well, there's always a mismatch of people on one end or the other. LaFesta Rhodes, 14 in the ball game, and here's an offensive foul on Michael Reeves going against Mike Bourne. Mike Bourne, just a heady basketball player. Always plays the game, has good basketball sense. That time, just waiting on the pass, the lob pass, sat there and took the offensive charge. Iowa leads by three. And an old Milwaukee quick stat. Team fouls, dead even. The referees doing a good job in this ballgame. How much more even can it be? And now Mark Jewell checks back in for Iowa for Al Lorenzen. 33-30. Iowa with 9.53 to play in the first half. And full court pressure and always a fast break. Mike Bourne trying to go inside to either Dorfeld or Greer and unable to do so. Tompkins from three. Far side rebound, Mark Jewell, and a big one it is. And then Tompkins been shooting the ball well outside as he gets hammered from behind. Lopesta Rhodes hacking him on the arm. First foul on Rhodes in the ballgame. 
And that's the seventh team foul. So now Iowa in the bonus with one and one. There again, penetration to the basket causes your problem. The road's trying to help. Right there comes up from behind. Mo will show you that shot and then put it and go on the floor and try and pick up the foul. You know, there are a lot of places where you can look for an auto part. But here is where you'll find it. Napa. We've got your part. In fact, we have more than 125,000 parts available. Napa has parts for imports and other hard-to-find parts and at the right prices. So don't waste time looking anyplace else. Come to Napa first. We've got your part. How long have your spices been sitting there? Growing old, weak, and stale. Replace them with Tones, pure, natural spices, specially sealed to lock in freshness, and small enough so you can use them up long before they go stale. Spices don't stay fresh forever. Fortunately for you, there's Tones, Iowa's own spice company since 1873. Live TV meteorologist Don Novak operates the most powerful and accurate weather radar system of any television station in central Iowa. Well, just looking at it from court's end, if they keep going at this rate, they're going to have, both teams are going to have 60 points at the halftime. It's a fast-paced game. Cyclones need to pick up the pace a little bit on the boards. Not too good in rebounding. Now back to Mark and Gary. All right, thank you, George Turner. And here's the way it looks in the shooting department. Iowa hitting at a 56% clip. Iowa State at 52 percent. Iowa State hitting the more difficult shots so it's more shots coming from uh, outside where Iowa State was banging it inside underneath. Jeff Moe with one basket to his credit tonight goes to the line with a one and maybe hitting 82 percent. <laughs> and on target with his third point of the ball game. And by the way that was a charge timeout to Johnny Orr not a television timeout. So that might be a factor before the game's over. Mo with four and Iowa by five. 35-30. And Bourne gets it up court to Terry Woods, who comes in during the timeout for Tompkins. Woods stops and fires. Nobody there but black-shirted Hawkeyes underneath. And down court comes Iowa quickly. Tom Davis substituting regularly. Lorenzen, Horton, Jones, Moe, and Marble in there now. And the shot is taken down by Rhodes. Gets it out to Bourne. And here comes a three on two. Greer will stop and fire. And he'll can it. Well, it's just a shootout at OK Corral okay, down this end. Tom Davis said this may well resemble an NBA game. And it is exactly that. Paul Dorfell has done an excellent job since he's been in the ball game. He's given Iowa State some better defense inside and on the board. Stripped away by Dorfell, picked up by Rose. And here we go again, a four on one to Woods. He'll stop, and Woods hits it. Make a tough shot there, four on one. You'd think you'd get a layup, but they get the banker down from about 12. Back to a one-point ball game. Dorfell diving for the loose ball, has it again. Gets it out to Rose again. And here comes Iowa State again, a three on two. And this time, Iowa hustles back. The Cyclones set it up. I mean to tell you, I've never seen this fast a basketball game in my life. Greer inside. Oh, what, oh, a, what move. a move. Rose Doesn't stays get with it. it. And a foul inside. Now let's go down and see the hustle scuffle inside. Well, Paul Dorfell, I mentioned before, has just been terrific inside. A hustle and defense. He's playing everything, playing great helping defense. He dives on the ball right here, is able to save it and get possession for Iowa State. But he's just been tremendous off that bench. Ed Horton caught an elbow in the neck, and Tom Davis quickly substituted for him. Horton with his first foul in the game, and Rowe is two of three at the line, and also has 15 points to his credit. So you have to wonder about the pace of this game. Iowa State basically, now with Dorfell, they can get to seven guys. Iowa will go eight guys and maybe nine. Well, Fester comes out for a breather, and Victor Alexander, the freshman from Detroit, comes in. And LaFesta Rhodes gets a standing ovation. Tom Davis with a look of concern as Iowa State has taken over the lead again. First time in a long time, the Cyclones have held the advantage. 
advantage, and it's a one-point even Stephen matchup. Four lead changes in the ball game. And the score has also been tied twice. Inside, Lorenzen working against Big Victor Alexander, the freshman. Lorenzen can't hit it, and the rebound goes to Iowa State. Out of bounds. Iowa State has fought back in this ball game on the boards. It cut Iowa off a little bit inside right now. This is a war inside. <laughs> from Bourne nicely picked up by Hill he saw it coming intended for Greer and he, Iowa with a great steal Kent Hill painted that pass he's a good athlete and quicker than he looks with his size of about 220 pounds or 235 I should say talk about somebody that'll hawk you up Mike Bourne Ooh. Tom Davis Hawkeyes Mike running their motion Lorenzen from outside, Hill skies for the board and oh. gets it with a nice reverse. Beautiful job by Hill that time. He could feel the pressure behind him. He used the rim for protection, went up, reversed it off the glass. Turnovers are costly in this game. Iowa State threw it away, that last possession, and Iowa made him pay for it. The weather didn't keep anybody away from this one, and they're getting their money's worth. Rebound, Victor Alexander. Can't hit it. Rebound to Greer. Still on his knees. Comes down and still maintains his dribble. The old Globetrotter show there. Marcus Haynes of the old Globetrotters. Woods lets it fly from three. Way short. Rebound. Tipped back. Iowa State basketball. Both officials agree. Iowa accomplishing what they want on half-court defense, and that's keeping the ball out of the middle. They've done a pretty good job. Where the only place they've really gotten hurt bad is on the uh, transition game, on the break. All right, Tompkins, Moe, Horton, Reeves, all checking back into the lineup. Tom Davis substituting frequently because of the tempo of this basketball game. And now timeout call. Gary Tompkins was afraid the four seconds would elapse, so he called time, and Johnny's charged with his second of the first half. Glacier Bay, Alaska, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Glacier Bay means the one and only Alaskan King Crab, sweet, fresh, and big. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Five TV's Jeff Connor keeping you in touch with all the sports news. Weekends at 10 on Five TV's Iowa News tonight. Well, Jeff Greer is going to show you some of that fancy dribbling. He does it all for Iowa State. Scores, rebounds, leads the team in steals. You see him here with a rebound, off balance. Possibly could have traveled. I couldn't see him. his feet, but comes down, keeps control of the basketball, and a good save. And here in the so-called clone dome, the score, as you saw, in a one-point ball game, and Iowa still out shooting Iowa State, 50 to 47 percent. Turnovers, seven to three. The Hawkeyes leading in that category, and the points off turnovers. Iowa State, 10 to Iowa's three, but Iowa dominating the boards, 21 to 11. Well, I mentioned earlier that's where Iowa State will have to try and counter the rebounding is to come up with some steals and turnovers. They have a little bit more quickness than Iowa overall as a team. Iowa by one, 37-36. And Tom Davis wanted over and back on LaFesca Rosen. I'm not so sure he didn't. One official looked at the other, and I don't think anybody saw it. Tompkins fires on the move, and Reeves hustles for the rebound. And here comes Iowa. Didn't look like Tompkins really got squared up good at the basket. 
Iowa State sticking to their man-to-man. -man. All right, now they've been in triangle and triangle two. Triangle and two. Right. You've got the two guards playing head up. Iowa trying to recognize. You see Reeves holding up his hand. He's going to run something. This has bothered Iowa the last couple times. Inside, ball knocked around. It's out of bounds, Iowa State. Knocked loose by Tompkins, and then it just sort of ricocheted off of two or three players. Mo and Mike Bourne are really going at it. They're John. I said, not fighting, just talking to each other. It's one little rooster against another. Down to the five minute 20 mark. Iowa starting to sag. Rhodes goes on top of it and hits it for three. Might have got knocked down by Mo. I can't believe that Iowa isn't tightening up on LaFesta Rhodes. Lorenzen for three. Uh -oh. Rhodes down with the rebound. Stripped away from him. And Horton slams it home. A big time dunk right there. I think they only gave LaFesta two that last time down. But he makes up for it. He gets two more. 20 points in the first half for LaFesta Rhodes at Iowa State. Leading by one again. What a basketball game. See if we still got. Lowe gets knocked down, slides halfway across the court. Here's a foul inside. And it's on Jeff Greer. Jeff Greer picking up, got him there in the first. See him coming to the basketball, cannot get there. That time loses control of it. And Greer going up, thinking he's going up for the easy two, commits a foul. Paul Dorfeld comes back in now for Iowa State, relieving freshman Victor Alexander. And B.J. Armstrong checks back in for Iowa. So now for the Hawkeyes, it's Jones, Lorenzen, Marble, Horton, Armstrong. And let's see who's going out. Moe's going out. For Iowa State, it's Bourne and Tompkins with Greer, Dorfeld, and Rhodes. As you look at Tom Davis, the National Coach of the Year. Horton short on the shot. Jones outreaches everybody, puts it up and in, gets it in a foul. What a play by Bill Jones. Bill Jones, 6'7", senior, good jumper. There's a good look at Paul Dorfell. I think the foul was on Dorfell. There comes the ball off. Jones goes up, and Dorfell goes after, tries to come back off it and stay away from the foul, but too late. Jones could make it a three-point play here as Iowa recaptures the lead, 41-40. Short, rebound, Horton. Stripped away, and Iowa State comes up with it. Mike Bourne. Iowa, again, a good job going to that offensive glass. Just quick hands that time. Saved Iowa State a, another possession. Born from three-point range, off the far side of the rim. And Tompkins hustles after it, but he throws it right into the hands of Bill Reeves. Armstrong quickly down. Cut off in the middle, a steal, and then another steal. And then thrown away. Boy, you can't even call the play-by-play -play at this tempo. It looked like Bourne made a good steal and then got grabbed. I know Johnny Orr's up, you see him there. And then there's a grab of the arm behind. It wasn't called. And then a good play by, by Jones comes up and blindsides and then makes the pass inside. It was deflected off, and Iowa State finally plays it inbound. Born grab, but it wasn't seen. And the turnover story, 9-4. Iowa still leading there. Well, in this type of game, you're going to see a lot of grabs that aren't called. The pace is so furious, the officials are not going to be able to be in position all the time. Rare from three-point range, and the far rebound comes out to Jewell. Long pass up court to Armstrong. Jones in the corner. Good secondary break that time. Iowa by three. Down to three minutes, 25 seconds. Left to play in the first half. Bourne wanted the shot, then telegraphs a pass to Greer, tipped away, and Iowa with an easy two, and Jones makes Iowa State pay dearly for that costly air. A nice heads up play by Marbler. He didn't try and just line drive the ball ahead. He got it up over the defensive man and lobbed it out in front of him where he could take it in easy instead of getting the ball maybe deflected or knocked down. Tompkins gets it into Greer, and Horton's got a piece of it. Greer will have
have two coming at the line as Horton commits his second foul. Well, Tompkins, his last ball game out against Creighton, had a career high 14. Good bounce pass inside. You see Horton making the grab on Grayer as he goes up. Grayer goes to the line for a pair. Grayer is one of one at the line tonight, and thus far has 11 points in the ball game. And as you saw, he not only leads Iowa State in scoring, but he also leads the team in steals. As Tom Davis looks at the situation on the scoreboard and wonders, what do we do now? Jeff Grayer in double figures now for the 33rd game out of his last 34. 45-42, Rhodes back in the ball game and another turnover. To Bourne, trying to go on the baseline. Cross-court bounce pass to Tompkins. And the rebound to Horton. Nobody there except the Hawkeyes. Tompkins looked down, looking at the three-point line. Should have just taken the ball, take your rhythm, go up and take the shot. Bill Jones, nice touch. Won't fall. Last to touch it, Jeff Bowe out of bounds, Iowa State. And Al Lorenzen checks back in for Mark Jewell now. If Iowa State should win this ball game, Gary, it would be the first six-game Cyclone winning streak in 25 years. Iowa's had to come off their 1-3-1 uh, press because Iowa's beat, or Iowa State was beating it so easy. That time, it looked like they went to a 1-2-2. We'll have to watch it again. Born from three. Dorfeld tries to ram it home. Bodies fly. No foul. And the rebound to Armstrong. Bounce pass into Jones. Nice move. And a foul on Mike Bourne. Mike Bourne has been doing a good job of playing two team defense along with Dorfeld. This time he has to help, tries to keep his hands out of there. Good interior passing, good bounce pass right there by Armstrong. Shuffle goes in there, Mike Arm or, uh, Bourne tries to keep out of there with his hands, but evidently got him with the body. Almost looked like a little push off before the foul. Jones now <laughs> drills it home. Jones, one of two at the line tonight. Coming into the ball game, he's a 67% free throw shooter. What a different shoot free throw shooting makes, Mark. Iowa moved up last year shooting 67% as a team. This year, 76%. Hill comes back in for Horton. Rebound, Moe tries to get it, and Tompkins gets out position. And there is the hustle of Jeff Moe. He went around Gary Tompkins, got inside, tried to tip it back up, and Tompkins fouls him. You know, the Hawkeyes on that free throw line are almost like looping linemen rushing a quarterback. They're spinning, reversing, they're doing everything. They're really giving 120% effort to catch that, that rebound. And Jeff Moe, who was perfect until that shot, is now two of three, and Mark Urquhart checks in for Iowa State. Here's a young man that is on the team on a National Merit Scholarship. He's not a basketball scholarship player, he's a Merit Scholar, and Mo gets one or two. Iowa by five again, 47, 42. And time winding down under two minutes here in the first half. Well, Iowa did set that time in a 2-2-1. here for Iowa State. They're down five. They want to make sure you get a good shot and not let this margin spread out to, say, eight or nine points. Another note here, Gary. Jeff Greer has been flashing out to a high post position, and when you do that, the only man under for Iowa State is Paul Dorfell. No wonder there's such domination on the boards by Iowa. And look at the hustle of the Hawkeyes. Good athletic ability on both clubs. See the reactions there, taking away passing lanes. Rhodes from three. It's good, and a foul on Hill. And that's a big one for Iowa because that's Kent Hill's third foul. Is it three or two? It is three. Three-pointer three for Rhodes, and then a foul by Hill, and Rhodes will have two coming, I believe. I think he was fouled after the shot. You see him definitely outside the three-point range. Hill cannot keep his momentum right there. He gets nothing but net. 
In the foul, there you see the referee, Phil Bova, coming in and making the call. Now that's a big call on Kent Hill because that is his third foul. And if he gets in too much trouble, then you have nobody to spare Ed Horton. Discussion going on at the official scores table right now. They want to get everything clarified, I believe. It might be. Uh, who was the foul on? Maybe. It was on Ken Hill. There we come. There's no doubt about the foul right yep. here. The road's going up. Well, Tom Davis made a substitution very quickly after the whistle, and Hill sat down. So the officials were unsure who the foul was on. Only one shot for Rhodes, not two. And he misses it. And Jewell comes down with a rebound. 47-45, a two-point ball game, a minute 22 to play in the first half. And this one's everything anyone could want. Marble. Jeff Grayer just backing off Mark Jewell. Iowa, State, Iowa State's defense has toughened up here in the last uh, seven, eight minutes. They played. Marble launches over Dorfell. Lorenz is there to clean up. Position. What all started that play was you take Marble's fake. You have to make him shoot the ball down. Mark Urquhart the other way. State's been doing a better job now of transition as far as defensive transition. Getting back. Thirty-five seconds left to play in the half. Iowa State down by two. And the clock in at the top of your screen. Shot got clock down to 19. Low won't waste that. He'll lay it up and it rolls over the hoop. Out of bounds to Iowa State. So the Cyclones will have 19.4 seconds in which to try to tie this game at intermission. The Hawkeyes again, Lorenzen inside, just could not control the ball. Mike Bourne gives the signal for the shuffle, and Iowa State will go for one. The smart and thing there's to the do to make sure you... Two seconds. It's good. You see Iowa State run the clock down to does an excellent job here. If you're still not respecting roads that come late, it could almost... Napa's having a busted out sale, so come in now for the bargains and let Napa get you ready for the big chill with sizzling sale prices on lots of wet rising parts and accessories for your car or truck, including Napa's power battery, booster cables, thermostats, engine heaters, spark plug wire sets, plus cooling system products and windshield scrapers and de-icers. Great buys on quality Napa parts to help you beat the big chill. Better hurry, though, before the sale ends. Available only at your participating Napa Auto Care centers and Napa Auto Parts stores. Green and growing, cold and snowing, colors in the fall. at New in Newton, where buying a new car or truck is more relaxing, more rewarding. Buy at New in Newton, where small-town service means top-notch attention before, during, and after the sale. Buy at New in Newton, where low overhead and great selection make a great deal in all new cars in Newton. Jack Maples offers Chevrolet's Oldsmobile's Cadillac's GMC trucks. Bob Axtell offers Ford's Lincoln's Mercury's Dodge Chrysler's Plymouth's. Dean Lonerbach offers Buick's and Pontiac's. Big enough to serve you, small enough to care. Buy it now in Newton. 
This Christmas, Hardee's is spreading a lot of cheer for just a little money because you can get your little elves a regular hamburger, fries, and a small soft drink for just a dollar. You can even get that last-minute stocking stuffer with an adorable, adoptable baby pound puppy or purry. So stop by Hardee's this holiday season. You'll get a lot of Christmas cheer for just a dollar and the perfect stocking stuffer at a special price because at Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Welcome back to Hilton Coliseum. It is jam-packed here, and believe you me, everybody's getting their money's worth tonight as Iowa State leads the seventh-ranked Hawkeyes by one at halftime, 50-49. to 49. And what a game it's been, Gary. It's been a tremendous game. The pace, just as they expected, both coaches said it'd be up and down. We can't hardly keep up with it ourselves. The officials are having a little bit of trouble, but it's what you expected. Iowa inside, boards and strength. Iowa State with quickness, getting the ball up and down the court and with a little bit better outside shooting. Now, can Iowa State continue to shoot with the pace the way it is from that distance where Iowa has the better advantage there of percentage shooting on the inside? You know, Tom Davis was concerned about containing Jeff Greer tonight. Here's LaFesta Rhodes and sort of an unheralded LaFesta Rhodes already with either 26 or 28 points. There seems to be some confusion on that fact, but we believe there's 26. Well, don't go away. We'll check the halftime stats, and we've got a whole lot more coming your way during our halftime program next from Iowa State. State University after this word from the Cyclones. <laughs> Together, Iowa State University, industry, and government are advancing the science of biotechnology to create new opportunities for agricultural product development and manufacturing in Iowa. Iowa is the predominant center for agriculture in the world and I think this will only increase it. I think it is an economic opportunity. As the number of farmers shrinks, we need something to sell to take up that slack and to employ people in the state of Iowa. It's better to do it with educated people in a field in which Iowa is already superior. So the marriage of, ed of education and agriculture and the ability to sell the product of those two things, I think is a big opportunity for us. Iowa State University, making tomorrow's dream today's reality. Well, at halftime, the Cyclones lead the Iowa Hawkeyes 50 to 49. It's been a great first half of basketball. With me is the head football coach, Jim Walden. Coach, we haven't seen any excitement like this since the Oklahoma State game down there. Well, I'm not sure it was that exciting. It's a heck of a, foot, a basketball game, George. It's kind of fun to be in this arena. I, I'm sorry for all those thousands that needed tickets and couldn't get in. It's a, it's, a great, it's a great spectacle. They're doing a fine job, both teams. Well, Coach, you gave the fans of Iowa State a lot of excitement this fall, and we're looking ahead to, well, a great many successful seasons. But uh, we know that you're a little bit short of players. Uh, could you kind of give us a rundown of what you're looking for recruiting-wise? Well, you know, as it stands right now, we only get 29 shots. And we only have 47 left, so we'll be a little short. But we're working mostly for the defensive kids. Uh, we lost three down linemen and two line, three linebackers and two down linemen. And so uh, we're just looking to replace the defensive kids and try to add a few more. We need linebackers and D linemen probably more than any other thing. We will take a couple of DBs, but we've got to get take care of our defensive things before we even talk about offense, George. Now, Coach, uh, you can sign some uh, junior college kids, as I understand. What's the date that you can announce those? Well, they can start signing as of, I think, December the 9th. Uh, we have two verbally committed. Uh, we probably won't release those until they're here. I've learned a long time ago when you're dealing with JC kids, uh, <laughs> make sure they're in the, in the, sta in, in the sta stable before you let them go. Something about a bird in the hand, isn't it? Something like that? Well, yeah, you know, because, you know, they, they really under no restrictions. We've, we've got two, and we should have two scholarship papers signed and over the weekend, and so if we do that, then I'll probably release them next week. Coach, this fall, we saw a lot of exciting things. The kicking game, the offense, a lot different than anybody around here had seen, and I think you told Mark and I that that's just a part of the offense. Is this true? Well, we didn't feel like we could open it up that much. You will see some similarities of what we've done. We'll always do a few of the things we're doing, but because we were so new and our players were so new, there was just so much of it they could draft, George, and we didn't want to get beyond their abilities that way. I would say you probably saw about 35% of what we expect to show these people in years to come. Well, Coach, I'm looking forward to next year. Good luck recruiting, and we'll talk to you later on. Well, thank you. It's a great ball game. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm here, George. Thanks, Coach. 
We'll be back. We'll be back with more of our halftime show after these messages. This is the Cyclone Television Network. Hello. Hi. Oh, no, your mother's going to be so disappointed. Matter, well, maybe next one? year. Yeah, we love you, too. Bye. What is it? They're not coming. Why did they have to live so far away? I don't know. Merry Christmas! We wish you a Merry Christmas. Each year, thousands of Iowa families suffer the heartaches of being separated during the holiday season simply because their sons and daughters feel job opportunities don't exist in this state. I believe we can change this. We need to make sure our children have the opportunities that will make them want to stay in Iowa. At United Bank, we've made it our business to initiate a loan incentive program that encourages our young people to stay at home, proving that we can create opportunities and assure a brighter future for all Iowans by giving our children a reason to work and live in Iowa. Have a happy holiday. For more information, call the United Bank, where your future is our business. Well, Stivers Lincoln Murphy continues to set the pace on special purchase values. We now have 1985 alliances, all equipped with automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, and factory air conditioning, starting at just $39.88. If you should decide to finance, put $588 down, cash your trade, and pay $99.37 per month. $39.88 or $99.37 per month. We're downtown at 12th and Locust, and also on Merle Hay Road, just south of the interstate. Don't be misled by catchy phrases and gimmicks. The simple truth is that the 5TV Forecast Center operates the most powerful weather radar of any television station in central Iowa. That, combined with a sophisticated Triton X weather computer and 5TV's team of weather watchers, makes 5TV's Forecast Center the best equipped and operated television weather station in central Iowa. Well, a great first half of basketball at Hilton Coliseum. We'll be back after these network announcements. I've never had a baby before. I mean, my wife and I never have. I've been to all the classes. Oh, I hope I'm ready for this. Thank goodness my company offers Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Healthcare coverage is the last thing I want to think about right now. I've got more important things on my mind. Mr. Sanders, huh? we can go in now. What? No! Mr. Sanders! Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans in Iowa. We'll be there for you. Snake River, Wyoming, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Snake River means fly fishing for lunker cutthroat trout, and Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer, and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, an Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Fellas, it just doesn't get any better than this. And halftime stats are brought to you by Old Milwaukee, Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And in the shooting department, Iowa with a slight edge, one-tenth of a percentage. In the free throw category, Iowa State hitting 62.5%. Iowa off mark tonight, 58.3. Rebounding all Iowa, 29 to 12. Turnovers, all Iowa State so far. Iowa has committed twice as many turnovers. And in the fouls, relatively equal, 11 to 8. Iowa State leading there. Three pointers. Iowa 0 for 2. Iowa State 4 of 12. Looking at the individual scoring now. Horton with 16 points. Jones with 11. Hill with 6. Marble 5. The big story here is B.J. Armstrong has failed to score in the first half. For Iowa State, it's LaFesta Rhodes. 26 points. Jeff Greer with 13. Nobody else in double figures. What a first half, Gary. Well, it's been a tremendous first half, and the board plays down just the way the strengths are of this ball club. Iowa State from three-point range. Iowa on the boards and so forth, which we talked so much about. Well, we'll be back with the second half in just a moment. Iowa State leading the Hawkeyes by 150 to 49. Don't go away. We've got a whole lot more.
You know, there are a lot of places where you can look for an auto part, but here is where you'll find it, Napa. We've got your part. In fact, we have more than 125,000 parts available. Napa has parts for imports and other hard to find parts and at the right prices. So don't waste time looking anyplace else. Come to Napa first. We've got your part. There are two ways you can follow the Hawks to the Holiday Bowl. The other one costs about $600 less. You can watch the game on Heritage Cablevision because ESPN, the total sports network, will be providing exclusive coverage. So, if you can't be there in person, get the next best seat. A close-up view of all the action on Heritage Cablevision. Call today. Jeep designed Cherokee to give you more than any other vehicle of its kind. Like a choice of two or four doors, room for five adults. And now you can get Cherokee with an optional four-liter six-cylinder engine that has more power. A lot more power than anything in its class. But Cherokee's biggest advantage is one that can't be measured by mere numbers. Cherokee is all Jeep. We are back live at Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa. And Iowa and Iowa State are head to head going into the second half. The Cyclones leading the Hawkeyes by one. And other big eight games. Here's a final from this afternoon. Kansas over the Wolfpack of Jim Valvano and North Carolina State. 74-67, I believe it was. And the bench scoring. So far, it's Iowa with 23 points off the bench. Iowa State only with five. But you also have to keep in mind that Iowa starters are averaging 82 points a game, or Iowa State starters, that is, and Iowa starters have been averaging only 58 points per game. Let's see if we can hear what Tom Davis has to say here. Well, crowd's too loud when you got 14,000 plus. Iowa has not won in Hilton Coliseum since 1981. Mark, one thing I did think I picked up out of that was something about keep your hands up. And I'm sure he's talking about in the zone. Make sure you keep your hands up. Give them some defense in front of them to shoot over. Don't leave that basket wide open so it's inviting target. Iowa will have the basketball as we start the second half. The original starting fives are in there for both teams. Armstrong, Jones, Hill, Marble, and Lorenzen for Iowa. Greer, Robinson, Rhodes, Woods, and Tompkins for Iowa State. And Robinson is playing with three personal fouls. <laughs> Iowa State, sort of a sagging man to man. Jones launches, doesn't hit it, rebounds his own miss, doesn't hit it again. And it's still nothing but black shirts underneath, and Jones stays with it and gets the hoop. Three times they went up, finally came away with it. 13 for Jones, Rhodes from three. 29 points for LaFesta Rhodes. Well, his career high 30 against Florida in the Big Apple NIT and the Hawkeyes answer. Boy. Roy Marble. A beautiful pass and a new career high 31 for Rhodes. We played less than a minute and we've already seen about four baskets. Marble inside. Robinson skies for the rebound, tries to get it out of there, does to Rhodes. Here's a two-on-one to Greer. Let me tell you, Jeff Greer made that play. That might have been an interception, but he went to the pass, beat the man there, and then was able to take it up with a tough shot. Iowa State by four. Just underway, second half. And if you feel the earth shaking, it's a Hilton quake. <laughs> this place is rocking. Most of the fans on their feet. Iowa State is looking to see to make sure. Uh, looks like they're man for man. Rhodes on Lorenzen. They went inside the first half, and they go inside again. And Jones quickly with two quick baskets, and now 15 points in the ball game. Hawkeyes do an excellent job on that baseline bounce pass right there. The, the only time I've really seen him shut out very much on that play was by Arizona. Bounce pass tried by Woods into Greer, and it's kicked. 
and the 45 second clock will be reset. Horton comes back in for Hill now. Look at, look at the big guy Ed, right there with six out of ten with six rebounds in the first half. He had 14 points. Mark Jewell also in the Hawkeye lineup and for Iowa State Mark Urquhart comes in in place of Gary Tompkins. Johnny Orr just wanted to talk to Tompkins. Woods tries to penetrate goes inside to Urquhart back to Woods. Nice. Nice find there by Urquhart went up thought he's going to have the shot blocked looked around found an open man. Woods almost with the steal. Recovered by Jewell. And little Terry Woods for Iowa State. Second in steals on this club. And would you believe the leader in steals, Jeff Dreher. Horton. Beautiful nice bounce pass. pass into Armstrong. And that's B.J. Armstrong's first two points of the ball game. And he but got what it, a pass. And got it down inside. I was going to say, Horton, the big guy showing you something besides just strength and muscle right there. A little finesse. There's only one thing wrong with this game, and that is one of these two outstanding teams has to lose. Greer misses it. Robinson still staying with it, and Horton grabs it. Lead pass to Marble, and the Hawkeyes have two on three. Marble doesn't get it. Bodies fly. Greer lets it go. It's Iowa State basketball. Marble. You look at him getting up some athletic talent and ability there. You'll see him jump away from people, but put it up way hard off the glass, and the ball is tipped back up out of bounds. I'm not so sure that Mark Urquhart didn't right. foul him on that play, but nothing called. Jeff Moe checks in, and now Bill Jones goes out for a rest, and Tom Davis working his bench just like he did last year, superbly. One of the few times we've seen this ball <laughs> lately be, uh, have to be fought up uh, the court at a slow pace. Inside the grab, but Jewel's too close. <laughs> now here's Woods inside. We see Mark Jewel with Mr. Basketball in Indiana his senior year up over the top. Cyclones will play it out of bounds underneath. First team foul of the second half on the Hawkeyes. This is the first game Iowa has played on an opponent's court this year, but that doesn't seem to bother Iowa because they were 13 and two on the road with Tom Davis last year. Rare three points. Well, the three-point shooting of Iowa State has really kept them in this ball game and out to this five-point lead. They've been boy, oh, they're slamming inside. Jewel launches Marble with position. You can't stop that one. Unbelievable how those Hawkeyes get inside. They've been out rebounded twice in the last 42 games. Arizona and I think Stanford over at Maui, uh, at least by the statistics that I saw, Stanford had them out rebounded. But I don't know how anybody out rebounds. Woods. <laughs> Iowa State has only missed five shots this half. Almost a steal again by Woods. Armstrong puts him on his hip and fires. And it's good, and a foul is on Robinson, and that's number four. That is a crucial foul for Iowa State, although Dorfeld did not score a point in the first half, but he really did a job to turn the ball game around. You see Robinson pleading his case, but so many times, Elmer Robinson will reach. And Johnny Orr wants to get Robinson out of there right now. And the man replacing him is Mark Dorfeld. Yeah, we say he had a tremendous first half. He did not score, but he had two rebounds, three steals, a block, and helped out on defense numerous times. So it shows that you can do something in a basketball game to be productive besides just scoring. B.J. misses for the first time this year at the line. Armstrong came into the game 13 of 13. Iowa State by three, 64-61. 15.35 to play. Inside Urquhart, back outside to Woods. And Rhodes over traffic, doesn't hit it. Jeff Moe clears the glass for Iowa. Armstrong driving and blocked by Rhodes. Horton baseline, doesn't hit it, but a foul inside. And the foul may be on Dorfeld. Lefester Rhodes playing like a man possessed. <laughs> He's all over this court. See Dorfeld with his third. That's a crucial foul. Starts on the baseline, goes up, hands up. Calls him on the body because his hands are out of there.
Jones and Reeves checks back in now for Iowa for Jewel and Marble and Gary Tompkins comes back in for Mark Urquhart. That was the third personal foul on Paul Dorfell. And somebody's throwing something on the court. So the official is going to come over and ask for a public address announcement, probably. Well, that's the last thing you need in a basketball game like this. I mean, this game is tremendous. Yeah. You do not want to spoil it. Piece of ice goes sailing down on the court. And at the line is going to be Ed Horton. Horton averaging only 8.1 on the year, and he's already got 16 tonight. Well, he switched time, of course, with Ken Hill. Ken Hill averaging 6.6. So they're getting about 15 points out of that center position. Horton's career high, 17 last year against Iowa State. In and out. Misses both of them. 64-61, Iowa State. And Iowa has not made a free throw in the second half. We're trying to get to the same point there about free throws. This game is so exciting, Mark. We're having trouble hearing each other. But uh, free throws have been killing Iowa. Woods. Only two. Only two. But that gives Iowa State a five-point lead once again. Woods igniting here in the second half. Whoa. Nothing called. Jones tripped by Rhodes. Second foul on Rhodes. And that will be the third team foul on Iowa State. So it will be out of bounds, Iowa. You're looking at LaFesta Rhodes. There he's again. He gets him moving. Rhodes one way. Sticks his knee in there as he kind of lost his position. As Bill Jones went on the drive. A tremendous first half. Iowa State now with a five-point lead. The biggest, 66-61. Lafitte, Louisiana, and old Milwaukee boats mean something great to these guys. Lafitte means flat bottom boat racing. And a Cajun feast that'll set your mouth on fire. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. It doesn't get any better than this. Tonight's telecast of Iowa State Cyclone Basketball is being brought to you in part by your Central Iowa Jeep Eagle dealers. We're in business to make a profit. Who isn't? And in the construction business, there's a myth that it costs more to build union. At Ring and Johnson Crowley Company, our success is proof that building union is not only cost efficient, but a good planning tool as well. Especially when you build a reputation of getting the job done on time and within budget. Building Union is just good business. When you build Union, you know it's built right. And that's good business. We're the plumbers and steam fitters of Local 33. One of the ways 5TV News is keeping you in touch is through our on-the-road broadcasts. We want to thank the folks who stopped by Southbridge Mall Thursday night to take a look behind the scenes of a television newscast. In the weeks ahead, 5TV's Iowa News Today will be going on the road again. If you've ever wondered what live television is all about, 5TV invites you to stop by and take a look. Just a reminder that near the end of this game, Mark Matthew and I will select the Cyclone player of the game. We're in Napa Auto Parts stores in Iowa and the Cyclone Television Network. We'll donate $100 to the scholarship fund that at the end of the year will be awarded to a Cyclone athlete who wishes to pursue a postgraduate education. There's the field goal shooting. Iowa State now up to 52%, but 77% here in the second half. And Iowa State also has not committed a turnover in the second half. Iowa State has won seven of their last eight games when shooting 50% or more. The Cyclones by five, 14 and a half minutes to play. Hill and Marble check back in for the Hawkeyes during that last time out. Marble in the paint feeds to Hill. And he loses it, but last to touch it was Iowa State. So Iowa will have possession, but only 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Dorfell that time a good job of cutting off the baseline and preventing an easy two. 
Reeves, nice feed to Jones, off his foot. Nope. They say it was off a Cyclone foot. And now the shot clock's whittled down to 15. Shot clock down to nine. Reeves takes it down to the baseline. And a whistle and a foul. It will be on Terry Woods, his second of the ball game. Let's see, it looked like the Hawkeyes might have tried to clear a side. They did. They cleared out and went Reeves on Terry Woods. A definite size advantage right there. Michael Reeves, 6'3". Terry Woods, only 5'9". And now the official conferring with a timer because one shot clock is on, the other is off. And the shot clock, now it comes on. There we go. It was unplugged underneath the Cyclone basket. The official spotted that. Bill Bulba, I don't know what the, the conversation here is about. The shot clock was reset on the foul by Woods, and I think John was asking, why was the shot clock reset? So Iowa still trailing by five, has the basketball again. We're under 14 minutes to play. Iowa State leads 66-61. Hill from the free throw line, no good. Rhodes down with the rebound. And almost goal pending. Rare, tripped, and then still gets his balance, fires, and Lorenzen clears it down for Iowa. Almost travels, and then Lorenzen wisely slows it up. I think a man got shot out there. I think Kent Hill, with rather that shot, was really looking for a pass. I... Bounce pass into Lorenzen. Great move. But the ball won't fall, find through the hoop. And Woods racing down court, stripped from behind, and here's a two-on-nothing marble. Credit that to Bill Jones. Good hustle coming from behind. Flicking the ball away from Woods. Made an easy two for Iowa. 11 points in the ball game for Marble. And the lead is cut to three. That was a big deflection and steal there. Iowa stayed up by five. A chance to take it to the, to the biggest lead of seven. Low post turnaround. Rhodes. 33 points for LaFesta Rhodes, and every basket he gets is a new career high. Fans wanted too high a dribble called against Jones, but it wasn't there. Thought he carried it, but he didn't. Bill Jones trying to post up. Well, it's running the cuts now on the baseline. Foul inside, and pushing off on Rhodes. He and Marble are having a few words. Well, there's some tough picks down there inside. The officials coming in to say, let's get together. Now watch the top of the screen as we show you this replay here. See Rhodes coming up on his man. Lorenzen waiting for the pass. He'll make his cut. And there he goes around. You see that the, the offensive man was moving on the screen. Yeah. He cannot move. Moving pick. And Rhodes retaliated, and that's usually what the official sees. Alley-oop to Lorenzen on the inbounds play, blocked by Rhodes. Lorenzen again misses the easy one, and then it's tipped out of bounds to Iowa State. Al Lorenzen is frustrated. He has had a couple of great chances. He just cannot get it down. Lorenzen a little slow as a basketball. He's pretty methodical as a player, takes his time. Iowa State by five, 68-63. Down to the 12-minute mark. The Hawkeyes rank seventh in the nation. Iowa State ranked 20th. Greer goes up, and he gets hammered. And I mean really hammered. But the hands are extended. They shake. No damage done. Just in the heat of battle, the crowd over there getting a little antsy. One of the few times I remember Iowa State really being inside on the offensive class, inside getting something long, and then Greer definitely inside, takes it up. Lorenzen coming across, he gets his money's worth. That's only the first foul on Lorenzen. Greer goes to the line with a couple. 
And Greer is four of four at the line. The last game against Creighton, he was nine of nine at the line. And we jinxed him again, didn't we? For Greer, 19 points in the ball game. Iowa State with their biggest lead of the game, 69-63. Marble dumps it to Hill, nice pass. Hill misses it. And then finds room to get it home. No, it might have been by Hill, I think. That's what I said. Okay, I thought I Hard to hear in here. Yes, I, I said Horton. <laughs> Beautiful pass. Rhodes gets the basket and the foul. 35 points for LaFesta Rhodes. Great pass here, and the quickness of Rhodes, how fast he gets up, enables him to get that shot off. Follow Horton, you get another look at it again. Here comes Horton, but Rhodes just beats him to the punch with his quickness, and Rhodes with a phenomenal basketball game, not only on his own, but getting some great help from his other teammates. And he makes it count, a three-point play by Rhodes. And Iowa State now leads by seven. And the Hilton fans are erupting. Because of outstanding factory incentives, Jim Wagner Nissan and Ames has purchased approximately 30 additional 1987 Nissans directly from the factory. These factory incentives can save you up to $2,200 on brand new 1987 Nissan cars and trucks. Jim Wagner also has over 30 1988 Nissans in stock and has more on the way. Combine these outstanding values with Jim Wagner's award-winning service department and you just can't find a better Nissan dealer. Now you can save up to $1,000 off the regular price of a new Minolta copier at M&M Sales Company. M&M Sales is offering special prices on selected Minolta copiers through January 30th. Save $400 off the compact Minolta EP270, specially priced at just $1,195. Or save $1,000 off the full-featured Minolta 410Z, specially priced at just $29.95. Minolta quality at terrific savings, now at M&M Sales Company. Five TV's Lauren Collier, keeping you in touch weekends at 10 on Five TV's Iowa News tonight. With exactly 11 minutes, 30 seconds to play, Johnny Orr's Iowa State Cyclones lead the Hawkeyes by the biggest margin of the ball game, 72-65. And the field goal percentage, look at the second half shooting of Iowa State. 69% and Iowa falling off the table down to 40. Things for Iowa Horton who shares time of course with Hill was their leading score at halftime 16 points. Iowa State has shut him off so far in the second half. He has not scored. And that stat of course an old Milwaukee old Milwaukee light quick stat. And the up to date shooting percentage 52 to 47. And now freshman Mark Baugh in the lineup for Iowa State. Hill goes to the hoop and hits it. And Hill is having another banner night. 12 in the ball game. Good post-up job there by Hill. Getting the ball and then really under control with the shot. Did not rush it at all. Iowa with pressure. Two on two. Down to Rhodes. Inside the ball. Well, Rhodes has been doing it all. Scoring and now you see he makes a great pass to the freshman Mark Baugh. It looked like for a moment, Gary, the Iowa press was going to bother Iowa State, but as soon as they touch that ball inbounds, they're off and running, and so is Ed Horton. Well, we said he hadn't scored in this half, but he gets a nice two there. 16 for Horton. Rhodes finds room inside. They just cannot keep up with LaFesta Rhodes' speed. He come out on defense that time, and he was around it like he was standing still. 38 points for LaFesta Rhodes. 10, 25 to play. Armstrong forces the shot. Marble gets the rebound and puts it in. And a great play by Roy Marble. That strength inside of Iowa it just continues to amaze me how they go to those boards. Iowa State still by five. Ten minutes, five seconds left to play. Jeff Moore that time had an idea of sneaking behind, trying to flip that ball out. Johnny Orr giving Jeff Greer some needed rest, and Terry Woods turns it over. Bad pass and good anticipation by Kent Hill. Pass has got to be away from that defensive end. Moe from three-point range. Loose ball, Woods 
comes down with it. And Lowe right there saying, come on. Woods trying to draw Mo into a foul. This crowd has been something else. Door fell. It won't fall. Iowa State has out-rebounded Iowa here in the second half, 15 to 13. Horton, far side rebound. Hill misses an easy lay-in and then walks with it. I think, no, we have a foul. The foul is on the floor and it's on Gary Tompkins, his third. That will be the sixth team foul of the second half, so the next one will put Iowa in the bonus. A kind of hurried up shot by Horton. He goes up, Hill goes up, doesn't get it back again. Looked like Ball might have been caught with a push there, and there you see Tompkins just reaching in and getting the grab. The official right on top of the call. Jeff Greer now wanting to come back in the ball game. He didn't know who he was going in for. No, Greer says he's not going for ball. He's rather going in for Dorfeld. And another old Milwaukee, old Milwaukee light quick stat. Team foul, 6-3. Iowa basketball. Armstrong faked the three-pointer. Armstrong just seems not like he's quite in the ball game and it doesn't have the confidence like normally he'd take that shot but he's hesitated and by that time the defense is able to catch up. Elmer Robinson comes back in for Iowa State and Robinson is playing with four fouls. He'll go in for Mark Ball, the freshman. It's the one thing you have to admire about this ball club of Iowa's unselfiness for both clubs. But B.J. Armstrong, a good scorer there, and their game is to get it inside, and that's where they're having success. Been a lot of surprises in the scoring department. Robinson, as you saw, only two points tonight. Moe with only one basket from outside also. And B.J. Armstrong scoreless in the first half. Nice pass into Jones. And Bill Jones continues to turn it on for Iowa. He has 17. Woods, two on one. Rhodes, and he's fouled by Jones. Iowa State has done a great job of beating the trap pressure and getting numbers on the other end. They're three on one, two on one, three on two situations. And outside of the first couple minutes, they've converted very well. Good pass by Woods to head, and then Tompkins has made some excellent passes. Rhodes again in the action, and he'll go to the line for two. Only the second foul on Bill Jones. LaFesta Rhodes will be at the line, and so far tonight, he's four of six. Well, three for five, according to that stat. Tom Davis looking on as Iowa State extends its lead back to four. Short, and then it gets the roll. And that, for LaFesta Rhodes, is 40 points in the ball game. The most points by a Cyclone, and in Hilton Coliseum, 47 by Barry Stevens. LaFesta Rhodes definitely has a shot at it. Jones gets away from Elmer Robinson and then hits a nice jumper. And Jones with 18. Nice feed to Greer. And he misses the easy roll, but Robinson tips it in. No, I think it was it's Rose. Rose. It's Rose, Rose gets the tip. 42 for Rose. And that's see Greer miss that layup that often, but that was under pressure and really coming strong. Full blast, full speed. Kicking the ball, they'll reset the 45 as Kent Hill comes back for Iowa. Eight minutes, 13 seconds left to play. 20th ranked Iowa State leading 7th ranked Iowa by five. And this one is a long way from being over. It's been the best ball game we've seen all year. Reeves. Rhodes down with the rebound. Wants to rifle it up court, but Iowa filled the passing lanes nicely. Woods. Has a shot block, goes to Robinson instead, and Rhodes tips it in. What a play by Rhodes! 44 points. He just cannot handle him. His quickness is something else. Low from three. Long rebound, fought for. Tossed back inside, out of bounds, Iowa State. Iowa State leads by seven again. And Tom Davis is, hey folks, Wait a minute, there is no timeout. I thought there was time, but there is not. Now they call it. You have, you have to wonder if that guy, LaFester Rhodes, will wear down if they can run all night long, but he's at a terrific pace. Listen.
Why do so many top cattlemen, dairymen, and pork producers rely on research-proven Kent feeds? Because of a secret ingredient no one else has. It's the Kent money-back guarantee. The guarantee sold me, but it's the performance that keeps me coming back. If Kent didn't make quality feeds, well, they couldn't guarantee him. And you can't argue with guaranteed performance. You gotta see your Kent dealer. The man with a guarantee. We make it right. It's more than a promise. It's a guarantee. Five TV's Betty Cross. Keeping you in touch weeknights at 5 and 10. LaFesta Rhodes is everywhere. Look where he's at. Left side of your screen. He's on the top of the key. Comes all the way in. Tips it off the glass for his 44th point of the ball game. Now, i got to relate this story because this afternoon I am just simply driving down the street. LaFester, in his car, sees me, pulls next to me, tells me to roll down the window as we're driving along. And I simply wished him well. I says, LaFester, have a good game tonight. He says, I feel it. I feel it. It's going to be a great game. And he was jacked up this afternoon. And boy, is he turning on. And as you mentioned, Gary, the Hilton record, 47 points held by Barry Stevens. LaFester Rhodes just three away from it right now. Iowa State, three of the last four meetings with the Hawkeyes. Victorious. I don't know who's winning this ball game, Iowa State or LaFesta Rhodes. <laughs> Here's a three on two. Woods inside the Grayer. Woods did a nice job there. He brought his man up to him, cleared the way for Grayer, then made the good feed. 21 points for Grayer, and the biggest lead of the ball game is now in Iowa State's corner. The Cyclones lead by nine. Last few possessions, I felt Iowa has taken the quick shot a little bit from outside. I think they need to sit back, get in their ball game, right there in the inside play. Lorenzen trying to go against a host of Cyclones and still hits it. Good play by Lorenzen, six points in the game. And now Iowa State quickly down to Rhodes, blocked. And finally one rejected and stolen by Woods. Shovel to Rhodes, but can't hang on to it. That's where the pass, a little, I, of course, I'm a bounce pass guy. The bounce pass right there, they've had a lot of straight pass, so you can't criticize it, but it's a pass that softens up and makes it easy to handle. 11-9 in turnovers now. B.J. goes to work, and a nice shot from the baseline, and Armstrong with his third bucket of the ball game. And the lead has been cut back down to five now, 84-79. Woods left alone. They want him to take that shot, but he elects against it. Bill Jones ready to check in at the scorer's table for Iowa. Iowa flexing into that zone. Robinson from three. Off the far side, Lorenzen down with it. I think Johnny Orr wanted him to use a little time on the shot clock. Cole from three. And this can change the complexion of the game in a hurry, but Cole is still without a three-pointer in the contest. Jones comes in, Cole goes out, Horton comes in, and Hill goes out for Iowa. Well, I feel as much success as Iowa's had inside, and Tom Davis is talking with Mo now. He said he's a streaky shooter, but it's not the time to go outside because they have so much uh, ability inside, and, and their game has been there, and that's where they're scoring. Mike Bourne comes in for Iowa State for Terry Woods. And now I think Johnny Orr wants to slow things up a little bit, if possible, and eat up some more of that clock. But Iowa State is not really a team that can change tempo that easily. When they slow it down, they turn it over. I think what he's saying here is make sure you get the good shot against his zone. Just don't put up a quick one. Bourne off the heel of the iron, and Jones out hustles LaFesta Rhodes for the rebound. That's right. Jones showed some quickness. He just wanted that basketball. He really went after it. Iowa can cut it back down to three. Armstrong wanting the basket and gets it, but only two. He's the type of player. He's been silenced without a point in that first half, and there's a bad throw in. Turnover and a foul. And who's it on? If it's on Elmer, it's number five. Let's see who the foul is called on. You see him going up in the drop-off pass here. Here's Jones. Well, Elmer Robinson was not in on the play that I saw there. Who it was on board. It was on board. It should have been, right. 
Second foul on Bourne, and Bill Jones can now close the gap down to a one-point margin if he hits them both. Jones, one for two from the line tonight. Well, the Hawkeyes have struggled at that free throw line tonight compared to their normal average uh, where they shoot 76%. Just moments ago, Iowa State led by nine in back roars, Iowa. And it's a one-point game. This ball game, that <laughs> team's going to go right down to the wire. Tompkins having difficulty against the press and a foul on Jones. And that's number three on Bill Jones. Team foul, number five on Iowa. Bill Jones jumping up and down there. He picks up his third. Really wasn't protesting the call. He was just mad at himself. He didn't get the ball and he committed the foul. Five minutes, 26 seconds left to play in this one. And it's been nip and tuck. Team foul, seven to five. Iowa still has a foul to give before they'll put Iowa State in the one-on-one -on -one situation. Iowa State slowing things up when they come up court now. And that has definitely changed the tempo of their offense. I'm sure that's not by design. I think with the zone, Iowa's been able to get back now, and Iowa hit some buckets and free throws, which slows you down. Robinson with a flat shot off the glass, and Iowa down with a rebound. And Iowa State is standing around on offense now. Nobody really moving, and Iowa has a chance to take the lead, but they turn it over. And a foul on Ed Horton, reaching in and that'll be team foul number six. So from here on out, everybody's in the bonus. See what we got on Horton. We've got Big Ed picking up his fourth foul. Here's the action. Here's Rhodes again with the deflection. And then Horton just losing his balance, making a reach, picks up his fourth. And Horton with four fouls in the game now. And again, the pressure bothering Iowa State. But they get it into Bourne. Overall, Iowa State has done an excellent job against the uh, pressure and the traps. Nobody moving. Uh, it may be the pace of this game. You're finally tiring out. It's been an up-and-down contest, and you have to play tough both offensively and defense. Rhodes will launch it. Doesn't hit it. Foul on Marble, and Rhodes will go to the line. That's a bad foul, but if you're going to hit it, as much as Rhodes is there on pressure, you don't want to foul a guy. Get a hand up there, make some motion, try and distract him. I looked over at Tom Davis, and he just kind of shook his head. Two shots coming for LaFesta Rhodes. 44 points in the ballgame. Iowa State by one, 84-83. And Thanks. Tom Davis has already loosened his tie. Of course, that happened a long time ago. <laughs> Here's Rhodes. 45 in the ball game. Just, you just got to give it to the kid. An unbelievable performance tonight by this young man, LaFesta Rhodes. 46. One more ties Barry Stevens Hilton Coliseum record. And Iowa State back up on top by three. Hard to hear. Horton wanted to go inside. Armstrong, look where he started to maybe want to take a hold of this game. Jones. Hit on Marble. Good defense by Iowa State on this occasion as the shot clock rolls all the way down to 10 seconds. And then Armstrong finds room on the baseline, doesn't hit it, and Greer pulls down the rebound. Well, he just sucked that out of there at only 6'5". Doesn't hit it, but Robinson oh. tips it in. What a big basket by Alma Robinson, only his second of the night. And then the transition by Grayer works both ways on both sides. When you beat a man, it forces defense to help, and then it lets the other players free up to go to the offensive glass. Davis is trying to shout instructions. He wants Marble to get the ball to somebody. Greer got poked in the eye. Marble goes over him, but won't fall. Rebound to Horton, up and in. Boy, they're letting him play inside, and Greer, Greer is bleeding. He wants time. He got hit in the eye. Well, we have three minutes, nine seconds left to play, and Jeff Greer may have a problem. Glacier Bay, Alaska, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Glacier Bay means the one and only Alaskan King Crab. Sweet, fresh, and big. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold crab.
crisp old Milwaukee beer and smooth golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Welcome to Seven Flags Fitness and Racquet Club, a $3.5 million, 85,000 square foot facility where you'll want to get in shape. Seven Flags provides individually tailored fitness programs and we guarantee results. Seven Flags features an Olympic swimming pool, a steam room, sauna, whirlpool, two tracks, one computerized. Different levels of aerobics with certified instructors. Racquetball, basketball, volleyball, and indoor air-conditioned tennis. Lessons are available in taekwondo, tennis, and swimming. Seven Flags, it's open now. Help 5TV make this Christmas a special one for some very deserving kids. Get involved in the Toys for Tots program by dropping off a new toy at our studios in Des Moines and Ames. Looking across the way at uh, Jeff Grayer, I think he got an elbow or a shoulder in the nose and has a bit of a nosebleed. They're trying to get it stopped. I think that uh, possibility changing the tempo of the game. The Cyclones were leading by nine and uh, now it's a three point ball game. Cyclones still with a lead. We'll have to wait and see if Jeff's going to be back in play. Now back to Mark and Gary. Three minutes, nine seconds left to play, and Greer is getting up. And here's the field goal shooting by Habs. Iowa, ice cold here in the second, 31.4%. Iowa State turning up the heat, 56%. And Greer appears to be okay. I believe it's Iowa State basketball, and it will be. Three minutes, nine seconds left to play. Iowa State with a three-point lead, and nobody's going home from this one early. Iowa, full-court pressure into Bourne. He wanted to go to Greer and missed the opportunity. B.J. Armstrong came out for a rest. Michael Reeves in there now for Iowa. Iowa looks like drops in now to a 2-3 zone. They did have marble on the top of that, that zone at a point. Robinson fakes the shot, then goes into traffic, tries to hit it, doesn't do it, and the ball's tipped out to Marble. Iowa can cut it down to one now as Rhodes hits the hardwood, takes a tumble, all alone is Hill, and it's back to a one-point ball game. And now an Iowa turnover, and Iowa can take the lead. Rebound, Marble. Look at Marble on that play. Robinson down with the rebound. It's taken out of his hand, saved by Marble into Jones. Over Greer, and it's still loose. What a save. Lorenzen, and there's an offensive foul on Lorenzen, no basket. As he just absolutely hammers into Robinson, and we have a war inside. Well, there's a lot of action under there, and Iowa State escaped, escaped the storm. You see Phil Bova giving the charge. Here it comes up, Jones on the shot, underneath. Trying to block out. Marble with a great move. A little push inside. Robinson comes out. Gets a knock to the weight by Lorenzen. Good save here. Jones comes up again with a semi-hook. Can't get it. The fight for the ball. It's saved in by Hill on a great pass. And then the offensive foul. And a tough foul because the basket went. Iowa State still leading by one. Down to two minutes, 12 seconds to play. And pressure being applied by Iowa. And they put Big Al Lorenzen on the inbounds passer. So it's tough to get it in. The Hawkeyes do a great job. I mentioned that before. They always pressure the ball in no matter where it comes in. Mike Bourne brings it up against Bill Jones. Last to touch it. Jones almost picked it off of Bourne. Jones with those quick hands and long arms almost made the steal. Gets it into Greer. Nice give and go. Elmer Robinson. Six in the ball game for Robinson and Iowa State back on top by three. And less than two minutes to play. Marble from downtown and a poor shot. Well, I think if you get beat by Iowa, you let Marble shoot that shot. He's a penetrator. And now Iowa State wants to run some time off. A minute 34, as you can see, Iowa State leading by three. Iowa State also with only one team timeout left. The importance of this when you run the clock down is if you get into your offense so you do get a good shot as you run it down and do, do, just do not give away a possession. Iowa now pressures up a lot stronger. Might look for a back cut. 
Robinson goes to a three-point range and fires. Doesn't hit it. Tompkins saves it. And they'll reset the 45, and we're down to a minute to play. Bourne in traffic. Finds room. Blocking. Got a block on B.J. Armstrong. Bourne will have a one and one. No, he'll have two. Well, that took some guts by the transfer of Mike Bourne. He comes here. It's a wide open shot. It goes his way. And then you see him jump over the top. It's a close call. Mike Bourne, he tries to jump away, and he does that, and he is moving. He's sliding away. He had his position and then slid back with him as Bourne made a good move to jump away from it. Tom Davis wants to call time. And they're going to let Bourne think about it for a moment. 54 seconds to play, and the Iowa State Cyclones lead by three. You just can't find a better place. You just can't find a better place to take your family for a great meal than the choice. All you care to eat smorgasbord. You just can't. You just can't find a wider variety of delicious food than the choice. Crispy fried chicken, stir-fried shrimp, fresh grilled fish, mouth-watering barbecued ribs, charbroiled chicken, thick, juicy pork chops, and at dinner an all-day Sunday carved roast beef. You just can't find a better place than the choice. All you care to eat smorgasbord. And the price is incredible. Go over Jeep Cherokee's advantages and certain things stand out. Cherokee gives you a choice of two or four doors, two shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive systems, and an optional four-liter six-cylinder engine that's more powerful, far more powerful than anything in its class. But perhaps Cherokee's single biggest advantage is the simple fact that it's a Jeep. Our telecast has been brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. By the Napa Auto Parts Stores in Iowa, with over 100,000 parts and accessories. By Pizza Hut, home of the pan pizza. By Highland Potato Chips, the chippiest chips around. And by Iowa's Blue Cross Blue Shield plan. We'll be there for you. Well, we'd like to say thank you also to the following people for helping with the broadcast tonight. From Iowa, Athletic Director Bump Elliott, Sports Information Director George Wine, and Coach Dr. Tom Davis. From Iowa State, Athletic Director Max Urick, Assistant Athletic Director Dave Cox, Sports Information Director Dave Starr, and Coach Johnny Orr. Folks, we thank you for your kind help. And Mike Bourne goes to the line for the first time tonight. He's hitting 83% from the free throw line on the season. Iowa State by three, less than a minute to play. Came up a little short. 10 out of 12 from the line, Mike Ward. Tom Davis. Iowa State in good, or rather Iowa in good position right now, having three timeouts left where they can do something to control the tie. Bourne misses them both. And Iowa hustling up court. A three-point shot would tie it. Armstrong, what a shot! I mentioned Armstrong being the type of player that once it, when the ball game gets, gets close and it's in doubt and he comes through. Timeout on the court. It's down to one point with 44 seconds left to play. 43.9 as a matter of fact. Now our Cyclone player of the game, without question, is LaFesta Rhodes. And your Napa Auto Parts stores in Iowa and the Cyclone Television Network will donate $100 to a scholarship fund that at the end of the year will be awarded to a Cyclone athlete who wishes to pursue a postgraduate education. 46 points, nine rebounds, one shy of the Hilton Coliseum record, but he's still got 44 seconds and he may break that. Well, Iowa State has one timeout. The thing that their players have to be prepared for is they'll try to use the clock up that so they can run the game out. But if they have one timeout, is to use it to save the possession. If they get tied up or on a count call, use your timeout and save the possession. Iowa, on the other hand, has the job of whether they're going to go after the ball tough on the inbounds and the foul. With the new rule, you can't foul intentionally or you give up two free throws and the ball. So they have to make it go after it, make a grab, not get a body. And surprisingly enough, if you're going to foul somebody right now, the man to foul would be Jeff Greer, according to statistics. Greer is the weakest free throw shooter in the lineup right now. 
Or the other thing you have to think about there is that Mike Bourne just went to the line, even though he's a good free throw shooter, and this ball game, he's only shot two free throws, and he missed them both. So that's something that Iowa might be thinking about. You look and play the percentages and uh, what happens in the game. What a tremendous basketball game. Over 14,000 packed to the rafters here at Hilton Coliseum, and every seat filled. And then some. Reeves in for Mo. This may be the crucial point of the ball game right here, just getting the ball inbound. Iowa State with one timeout remaining. Beat the 10 seconds. Rare, get it across the line. Iowa. They're going to be vulnerable on the back end because they're really coming up to trap. Iowa State does not have to take a shot, but they do. Five-second call. That's just what I was talking about. At this, the bench or somebody should have been talking about save the timeout and save the possession. You have to give up your timeout. The ball is too valuable. And now with 25 seconds, Tom Davis takes time. And Iowa doesn't have to take a shot until the buzzer. And they can win it with a last second shot, even inside. And here are some of the people that make our telecast possible tonight along the Cyclone Television Network. What a thriller. Well, Iowa Hawkeyes, who 13 and 2 last year on the road. In fact, they had a sequence of Minnesota, Illinois, and Purdue road wins consecutive. And that saying that they bought themselves back here and got a chance with the basketball and a one point deficit. And again, to go back to that timeout, it's a crucial. You have to give up your timeout to maintain possession of that basketball. I did not see anybody coming from any direction. Did you? Signaling for timeout, players, bench, or otherwise. Johnny Orr having a strategy session now. Now both teams are down to one timeout remaining. You talk about a costly turnover. That may be the turnover of the ball game. Iowa will have the ball out in the backcourt. 25 seconds exactly to play. Well, the Hawkeyes had plenty of time to go inside, which is where they have wanted to go all night and get to that free throw line, even though they struggled a little bit there. Tom Davis, 36 and 6 in his second year in Iowa. And the time is coming down. Armstrong, pick set for him up high. He'll take the shot. Not oh, there. Push Rebound. off. Push off. No. And a foul on Robinson. Robinson inside, and that is five on Robinson. And Iowa will go to the line with a one and one and 12 seconds left to play. Well, they went to BJ, the money man. There goes Elmer Robinson. He's not seen a whole lot of time because of foul trouble. The shot goes up. Robinson coming from behind. You see him coming over oh, yeah. the top, reaching, and no doubt about the call. Well, Johnny Orr is going to take all the time they'll allow him right now to put a little ice on Ed Horton will be at the line. Horton's only a 55% free throw shooter, but so far in the ball game, he is two for four. And it's going to be Dorfell coming in, replacing Elmer Robinson, who just fouled out. That's a good break right there for Iowa State, because they still have the one timeout now. They're able to use a delay on Horton right here, who's probably the poorest free throw shooter on their club on the line, 55% coming in. And the crowd giving him the business. It's good. It. It's tied. That is pressure, and Horton responds to it, and that's what's great about this game, to play in a, in a situation like this under this kind of pressure. This ball game comes down to 12 seconds. That's how even it really is. Ooh, that, that it, must have hit it's the, no good. the rim. It's no good, and Greer uses the last time out with the score tied. So, Iowa State now has the basketball. The score tied at 90, and there are eight points one seconds left to play. Well, that's plenty of time. I thought that was the air ball. Must have hit just the Must underneath have just of the, nipped rim. the rim and fell straight down. If they hadn't have painted that today, uh, he wouldn't have caught it. What a basketball game. Eight seconds left, 90 to 90. Iowa State really has let the ball game slip away. And now, now Iowa came back. Let's see if we can hear Johnny Orr. I don't know if we'll hear it before. the play you'll take a look at it
listen to Tom Davis now. We are 8.1 seconds away from overtime. I would think that Iowa right now, they'll probably press, put some pressure on, but not the type that goes for the steals right here, because Iowa State has shown that they've beaten the press during the ball game many times. They've got the easy shot. So I look at the contest the ball in here and then drop back and play at a softer press than really aggressive. We'll see what Tom Davis does. Iowa still has one timeout remaining. Iowa State has none. Iowa State is inserting Terry Woods in place of Dorfell. They'll go with three guards, Tompkins, Woods, and Bourne. And Greer gets it in the corner. Eight, down to five. Four. Marble against Greer. Three, two, one. At the buzzer, it won't fall. We have overtime. And Johnny Orr wanted a foul, but there is none. Well, they're not going to call a foul on that particular play, I don't think, there. And Marble did a good job to contest Grayer outside. Now, as we go into the extra period, Iowa State will be without Elmer Robinson. I believe now Iowa State will get a timeout. Well, that's they? right. So each team We'll have a timeout now, so we are going to play an extra five minutes. Boy, it is a, a dinger, as Johnny Orr calls it here at Hilton Coliseum. We hope you're enjoying it wherever you're watching across the United States and, of course, across the state of Iowa, too. And if you think it's hot at home, boy, you ought to be in here tonight. Well, it's too bad. the tie. Well, it's, uh, it's, I'm too excited to get with that tie, but it's too bad that every person in the state couldn't be here to see it in person, but those that can't, we're glad they're watching on uh, our Cyclone Television Network because you couldn't ask for a better ball game. This is the type of game that's built up to what it's been, and a lot of times they don't come off like that. No, they don't. So far in the ball game, LaFesta Rhodes has been the story for Iowa State, and Ed Horton has been the hero for the Hawkeyes. Well, with this overtime, it gives uh, oh, yeah. LaFesta Rhodes a chance to break uh, the Iowa State scoring record and the Hilton Coliseum scoring record. And I just noticed B.J. come out to uh, center court talking to the official, and he had a smile on his face, and I think he's breathing a little easier and feels like, well, we got life. Five minutes in the overtime period. LaFesta well, Rhodes, 48 points on the board right now. I guess he did break it then with 48, those free throws. We, we got him on 48. We have 48 on the board. We'll check All our right. official stats. We missed him on one. He did set the record. And Ed Horton has 19, Bill Jones 21. And here we go with overtime. Tip control momentarily by Iowa State. Then off the foot of Bill Jones. And it'll go back to the Cyclones. Jones had the steal for a second. He has done an excellent job, Bill Jones. He had the ball there. He was going to make a big possession. Just unfortunate the ball bounced off his foot. Tompkins, trouble getting it in. Gets it into Woods. Here they come. Three on two. Over to Greer. And he'll hold up. Good smart play by Greer that time. Nothing but an offensive foul going to happen if he takes it up and in. Iowa playing his own again. And Greer sliding along the high post. If Iowa State should miss, there's no one underneath. But they don't even get a shot away. They turn it over, and Armstrong up with the basketball. And they've got Dorfell on the inside trying to bring Greer out where he get a chance for the ball. Foul out on the floor. On the dribble against Terry Woods. Armstrong will be at the line. I mentioned earlier in the ball game with about five or six minutes to go that Armstrong seemed to be coming to life and uh, it's game time uh, it always seems to me like he's a gamer and uh, he has come to play in the last six seven minutes keep in mind that Iowa State held a nine point lead the widest margin in the contest in the second half misses it somebody's in the lane too soon and a lane violation. Armstrong came into the ballgame hitting 13 of 13. He has missed two in a row tonight. But that one doesn't go in the book. That's an alternate throw now. And you'd have to credit that to Iowa's offensive rebound ability to get in on the free throw line and it caused Iowa State to check early. So officially in the scorebook now, Armstrong will be one of two. Alternate throws don't count. And it made a difference, as you can well tell. Big violation. <laughs> Armstrong with a dozen points in the game. And again, Tompkins with trouble getting the ball in against the press. 
Iowa State has done a good job in that pressure standpoint that the inbounds man will run with the basketball after the made basket or free throw, which you can do, and release himself from that pressure of the big guy. Ed Horton down low saying hands up, hands up. I would think that the pressure now is on Iowa State. They've been running for 40 minutes, and now they have to run for five more. Can they keep up the pace? And one thing, that guy has not had the ball for a long time, and he still is able to shoot the ball down. Professor Rhodes with 51 points. And Iowa State reclaims the lead, 93-92. Horton doesn't fall. They've got Rebound a the there. Here's a two-on-one. Woods. And Woods made a beautiful play there. He looked the defensive man off as if he was going to pass, got him to drop back, and then went up high. Made a tough shot. Armstrong. And Dorfeld down with the rebound. Up court to Woods. points and Tom Davis calls time. Iowa State doing a big rebound by Grayer again coming out and just as the ball game after the first eight or nine minutes Iowa State being able to get out of there quick with their speed and get down and get that numbers games two on one. Look at Elmer Robinson the Iowa State bench. Elmer of course is Foul out of the ball game. Here's the play. That time the defensive man sagged back. A push. Grayer gets away with a push right there underneath as Woods missed. But LaFesta Rhodes beating Iowa's big people back all night long comes through with another great tip. Well, you see the stat there. Iowa State, and I think they've scored over 100 points in every home ball game. No, no, there you go. stations because there is a chance you may have to change transponders because of the overtime we may have to change transponders so listen closely and we'll inform you of that if that possibility occurs three minutes 19 seconds 97-92 Iowa State it was tied at the end of regulation at 90 trying to clear aside early that time with B.J. again rubbing off. Oh, State playing good deep and there's the rub. Blocking. What has to happen on that play from Iowa State standpoint, when they set that pick, the big man for Iowa State has got to get out there and hedge early. He cannot let that guard come around with that freedom and then try and catch up. He's got to get out there, hedge, show himself, and make him hold up on his dribble. All right, a word for our affiliates watching. We will be able to stay on this satellite transponder. So stations, you will not, repeat not, have to change transponders. B.J. Armstrong at the line. And now he has the range. He is now officially three of four. Just under three minutes to play, 2.58 remaining. Seven ninety-four Iowa State. That's where they had success early. That press going over the top. Tompkins almost got caught midair, and Rhodes doesn't hit it. Lorenzen down with it. Iowa that time came with a one-three-one half-court trap. Two and a half minutes. Horton almost. Dorfell, a nice, dude, boy, it's, I just can't hear you, Mark. I'm sorry. I'm going to say Dorfell, a nice job keeping his hands out of the shooter. Offensive foul inside against Terry Woods. The basket will not count, and that's four fouls on Woods. And Iowa will have a one-and-one one on the other end. 
and a chance to come back to within one. They call this foul. You look at how it concerns Johnny Orr. Here comes Woods. Comes down, moves in. Instead of moving away and out to the side and getting away from the, the charge right there, he runs into the man, picks up the foul, and good defensive position by this guy right here, Armstrong. I said he's a money player. Boy, is he ever, especially at the free throw line. Came in 13 of 13 on the year. And he's draining them when they count most. That was the fifth straight free throw by B.J. It's back to a one-point ball game. 97-96, Iowa State. Greer, here comes a three on one. And Greer doesn't like the looks of it. He'll slow it up. Rhodes with a body fake. Reverse layup doesn't hit it. And the rebound comes down to Armstrong. And Iowa with a chance to reclaim the lead. Down to the two-minute, five-second mark. Pretty good play by Rhodes. He had it underneath, inside. He couldn't take it up on the side that he wanted to, but tried to reverse it up. Just did not get the ball down. Iowa a chance to retake the lead. A lot of bumping and shoving inside. Jones stripped of the ball by Rhodes. But a foul on the arm called by referee London Bradley. And on Rhodes, that is foul number four. Johnny Orr unhappy with Lopester on that, just simply reaching in. And team free throws are keeping Iowa State or Iowa in the ball game as Bill Jones ties it. Iowa shooting 70 for six, six percent as a team. And Jones. Gives Iowa the lead, 98-97, 150 to play. Jones with 23 in the ball game. And since Iowa has been hustling back, dropping off the pressure, Iowa State's been having trouble getting its offense in gear until Jeff Greer gets his hands on the ball, and Greer now with 23. Oh, good jump pass by Woods, but a great job by Greer of sealing his man off right behind him. Iowa State averaging 104.6 points a game at home. Armstrong back door. Good cut. I mentioned earlier they've been every game at home, but Arizona State was the one game that they did not get 100. They got 99. 199. A minute three. They got to be looking for Greer. He'll take it from three. Doesn't hit it. Tompkins. Wants to fire it back up, finger rolls it, doesn't hit it. Rebound, Dorfell, loose ball. And Dorfell is tackled by Lorenzen. Lorenzen unintentionally falls all over Paul Dorfell, but no foul call. I think Iowa State's going to get the ball out. Gary Thompson with another key offensive rebound. Comes in, makes a good fake, gets Lorenzen up. Finger rolls, but it's got spin on and comes out. You see the ball, Dorfell right here, now tries to get it, loses control. And then Lorenzen right over the top of it. There's another angle. It's like horseback riding. <laughs> Iowa State basketball. 49.5 seconds left to play. Shot clock reset. Iowa with a one-point lead. Clock running down the game clock. 42 seconds. So a key for Iowa State needs to score because Iowa will be able to run out the clock. Woods from three-point range. Short. Loose ball, Iowa has it, and then they turn it over. Over to Rhodes. What a save, a lot of action. The game just flip-flopping back one way or another. One team seemingly having the game. Nice dribble by Jones. Jump ball, alternate possession arrow goes to Iowa State. What a big arrow that is for the Iowa State Cyclones. LaFesta Rhodes came down with a perhaps a game-saving rebound. He was tied up by Ed Horton. And Iowa State now will have the basketball and the lead and 10 and a half minutes or seconds left to play. We're trying to watch both coaches here. Johnny Orr will get charged with the timeout. 
So Iowa State is without any further timeouts in the ball game. Iowa still has one remaining. And let's look at the flurry. And here comes Jones. Lost his foot in there, a little off balance. Look at the shove right there on the inside by Horton. And Rhodes comes down with it. And he's swarmed by people, goes down, and they give him the jump ball. There's the other act. You see Not so sure Jones against Flip might have been traveling, right? Couldn't see it. Ball comes out. There you can't see the push by Horton, but it's a battle underneath. Rhodes comes up with his quick jumping ability. And it'd be poetic justice if Iowa State wins this ball game that Rhodes hits the winning basket. He's got 55 points, 11 rebounds. Ba la 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 fester. Well, the interesting point here is the fact that if there was a question mark at the start of the season, whether or not Iowa State could be successful, it was at center. Sam Hill graduated. Daryl Spinks was inact uh, ineligible academically. And so they converted LaFesta Rhodes from a forward to a center. And everyone wondered, can he score? Well, tonight <laughs> answers that question. A new Hilton Coliseum record, 55% or 55 points and 50 percent of the points also 55 of 101 well, Iowa right now is in that situation one down they're gonna probably have to look to get a quick foul because they've got a timeout left and with uh, 10 seconds is a lot of time if they give up two free throws they still have a chance to come down with a three-point play and tie the ball game or if they miss on the front end uh, they have a chance to win it with just a one-point lead again crucial in here Get, you got to get the throw in. Watch for a release by Iowa State. Maybe sending a guy down long. Iowa State cannot call timeout. They've got to get it in. They do to Dorfeld. Back to Tompkins. Up court to Woods. All alone is LaFester. And he'll hold it. And he's fouled. With nine tenths of one second left on the clock. And Iowa State is going to win the basketball game, but the smartest play of the night was LaFesta Rhodes holding the basketball. They call an intentional foul, so Rhodes will get two, and I think Iowa State gets possession. Well, they will if it's an intentional foul. That's the new rule, no doubt about it. Tom Davis is up at the scores table. He doesn't like the call, but keep in mind, these are Big Ten referees. Well, Johnny Orr is looking for a two-shotter. Now, they're talking about whether or not it should be intentional. They may change it. I'm betting it comes up one and one. Tries to get it. Fester puts the ball on. Sees trouble. Goes up. Going to take some time off the clock. No, I, don't, I don't think I don't, it was intentional. No, I, I surely wouldn't. No. I think it was a legitimate non-intentional foul. Right. And give him two shots for shooting, but not the, not the basketball. when the official's arm goes up. It's not up yet. Yep, two seconds is right. One nine, he's got a legitimate case. He does. Tom Davis is right on the button. There should be two seconds. Well, actually one more than what they have. 1.9, so we're arguing over one second. Violation. Bill Jones ran in after the ball was handed to LaFesta Rhodes. They have to count it. Well, Jones lost his poise. They gave the free throw to Iowa State. And I believe there's timeout now, on the court. Now they're going to get their timeout. Iowa will use its last timeout. Nine-tenths of one second left on the clock. 
Iowa State with a two-point lead, 102 to 100. LaFesta Rhodes with 56 points in the ball game, and it appears, at least for now, 20th ranked Iowa State is going to upset 7th ranked Iowa. We are told from the official scores table, the basket counts. There is a violation for running into the lane after the ball was handed to the player, so they'll get another free throw. Now, I'd like to also have a shot of the Iowa State huddle here, if we can, Bob, because there's a couple of players who are no longer going to be in uniform this uh, year. Adrian Moore and Matt Morgenthaler, who started out the year with the team, have been redshirted and they'll undergo a medical hardship this year because of injuries so they will not dress with the squad anymore this year but you can see that the celebration has started at hilton well a lot of things can happen even uh we've got about one second left you can think about a thing here it could go through my mind i've seen it many times you've got the three-point rule you could miss the free throw intentionally the time you could get the ball and play and down you're going to have to throw it up from about uh 85 feet you can make the free throw i will get it out of bounds they can throw long down court and maybe get a shot a three-point shot off to tie you those are slim odds but i'm telling you it happens it can happen i'm sure not so sure that it wouldn't be a bad idea just to hit the ball up there hit it on the rim and let it bounce high and stay away and make sure you don't foul but you've got almost one second left Johnny Orr wants Iowa out of the huddle, but the officials are conferring at half court right now. They're having a conference. Let's see how many free throws now they give LaFesta Rhodes because of the lane violation. Nine-tenths of a second left to play. 102 to 100. My defensive players would all be in front of the three-point line if he's going to make this shot. Johnny Orr doesn't have a player in the lane. He wants no chance of a foul. They give LaFesta Rhodes one more. Who's going to shoot it in? He can make it. He doesn't hit it. Misses it. Oh, it is. That's what I mean. That's what's been his It's favorite. over. And Iowa State has upset seventh-ranked Iowa 102 to 100. And look at this. Uh-oh, trouble on the court. One of the assistant coaches trying to attack Johnny Orr, and Orr is mad. And Dave Cox, the assistant athletic director, trying to separate the bodies right now. Well, I don't know what precipitated that, but uh, don't want to ruin a beautiful ball game either way. I no. tough to lose. I'd say it either side. Uh, the only bad thing about tonight's game was that one of these two teams had to lose. And I wish you could see the hug going on at half court between B.J. Armstrong and Gary Tompkins. Gary Tompkins and B.J. Armstrong literally put their arms around each other and gave each other a heck of a good hug. Don't let anybody kid you that this game doesn't mean anything to anybody. And look at that. There, that's Jesse Jackson, the presidential candidate, isn't it? He's running for both, isn't he? <laughs> well, well, we'll finish this in just a minute. We'll be back in a moment. Iowa State wins this one in overtime.